Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS, that we've been talking about, reviews acquisitions by foreign companies to ensure that they don't threaten our national security. And in our last hearing, we discussed how technology transfers from our companies to foreign competitors can undermine our security, and how CFIUS does not cover certain transactions where our adversaries are intentionally investing in American startups in order to get access to critical technologies. So when CFIUS, but I want to ask a different question around this. When CFIUS does review a transaction, it can approve it with a mitigation agreement that requires companies to complete certain steps in order to reduce the national security risk. Now, CFIUS is supposed to ensure that parties implement the mitigation agreement, but a draft Pentagon report issued in February of 2017, I think Senator Menendez just referred to it, advised that CFIUS should try to minimize reliance on these agreements because they are difficult to enforce and there are not enough resources dedicated to monitoring them. So, Dr. Huffbauer, as more investigations into the national security risks of transactions become necessary, how can CFIUS ensure that a mitigation agreement is maintained over time if overseeing that agreement may be too costly or uh, addressing security risks of the transaction may be too complicated? Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, it is a problem because as Chris Padilla said, um, there's only about 100 people in the staff of CFIUS, and, you know, it's hard to, uh, with that size staff, to uh, do all the follow-up that's necessary. So with this, if this bill becomes law, there has to be a, a substantial expansion. But in addition, I would suggest that um, where there's a mitigation agreement, which obviously the company wants, the acquiring company and probably the acquired <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the acquired company, they should put money into some kind of escrow in the Treasury to ensure the enforcement over a period of years, five years, ten years, to take care of the financial burden that this, mm -hmm. is, that this will entail. Interesting idea. You know, thank you. I, I should note that the defense authorization bill that passed Congress last year requires a multi-agency report that includes an assessment of whether current CFIUS process provides adequate monitoring and compliance. And I think we're, we're, we need to work through this and need more good ideas on how to do this. You know, the discussion of CFIUS focuses on protecting our national security while preserving foreign investment. But I want to touch on a policy that I think protects both priorities, and that's investment in basic research. Jim Lewis, a former official with the Department of State and Commerce, uh, testified in this committee last year that CFIUS reform should be paired with policies that drive innovation right here at home. And that means investing in research that helps our economy and our military. He said that our underinvestment in scientific research, quote, creates a self-imposed disadvantage in military and economic competition with China, and that maintaining our economic and military superiority requires investment both by encouraging private sector investment and by government spending in those areas like basic research where private sector spending is likely to be insufficient. So let me start with you, uh, Dr. Huffbauer, again. Would more government investment in scientific research support the core objectives of CFIUS by protecting strategic industries from foreign competition and maintaining our technological advantage? Uh, yes, when you were out of the room, Senator, I gave a big plug for more investment, both by the government and by private firms. I, I want to give you as many chances as possible. Well, in any event, yes, this is, this, is, this is the big picture. What we do to stir innovation in this country is substantially more important than what we do to block outward yeah. technology going to China or Russia or these countries. And we, we should do more. We're, 
we're, it's not very good right now. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's very well stated. Anyone else like to weigh in on that? I would just like to underscore that doubly. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. There's no question that uh, what we're up against are foreign governments who have very kind of centralized, uh, you know, groups that they put together from funding perspective to attract talent, to build technologies, and there's a lot more we can do in the U.S., no question. Good. Anyone else want to add or just say yes, yes, I so I can get a good <laughs> record here? I, I would strongly <laughs> echo the comments of my colleague, Senator Warren. Good. Uh, I strongly agree with you, Senator, particularly given the, frankly, staggering scale of the investment that the Chinese government is putting into advanced technologies right now. Well, I really appreciate it, and thank you all on this. You know, I think it's important to stand up to unfair commercial practices that harm our economy and threaten our national security. But I also think we need to make the necessary investments here at home in our own research. That's what keeps us strong, and that's what gives us a true advantage. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.